I once had uh, a person talk to me about one of the swords that he had bought from me and that it wasn't right. And after dealing with him a long time, I realized and told him, I said, what you want is to find a sword in an old curiosity shop that vanishes once you've walked out the door. I said, I don't sell those, I don't make those. What I sell are swords that can become good old friends. But what you want is only in novels. And then six months later, he came back and bought a whole bunch of swords from me because he got to realize that, hey, that's right. <laughs> he looked for that old curiosity shop and it wasn't around. <laughs> yes, I can make, using modern steel, an excellent sword, something the king would have been proud of. But, I try to use the analogy of if it was a Model T. I mean, you want to know what it's like to ride the Model T Ford? Well, we can build one, but we can make it out of composite, because why not? We have the technology, we'll make it a little bit lighter. And they're yeah, really bumpy, let's, let's make a special suspension because we can do that too. Different tires, heated seats. You see where I'm going? It's, it's not a Model T, and you're never going to know what it's like to ride in one following that path. Our access to real history is so limited, and, uh, and I'm just enchanted every time I have um, some small glimpse, some, you know, dimly lit insight into, uh, into, the, into history itself. And so I feel that a collector like myself does uh, at least have some utility to those attempting to rediscover the sword and that uh, I can provide a swordsmith such as Paul the opportunity to make very careful measurements of some of the uh, original swords which have survived. My whole goal is to be able to do what the ancient smiths did. They knew what they were doing. I look at some of these old blades and, I, and my skill level's not low. I look what some of these people did. I've got work to catch up to them. These are people a thousand years ago or more. The sword in its period of use was glorified. I won't say it was romanticized, but with the development of guns, it took a long time for the gun to actually supplant the sword. In the first place, it didn't fire that often. It wasn't that accurate. It was not that the gun was that deadly. It gave more power. Well, as the old line, uh, God may created man, but it was Colonel Cope that made him equal. <laughs> Sometimes I look at it like it's a crossword puzzle. And the more I talk to different people about it, it's like asking for help on it. No, I want to do it myself. I maybe construe the wrong way, but I, I enjoy getting primary knowledge. Because I don't want to read something in a book, necessarily I do it, because hopefully I'm doing things that people haven't written about in books yet, because they haven't done them since these ancient smiths were, were alive. Although our technology has progressed far beyond needing the sword as an object of personal defense. The symbolism of the sword is obviously still something that's very vital in our culture. And for this reason, I think it's nice that we can perhaps honor that memory by putting in the work to figure out, well, really, what was the sword and how was it used? Well, my goals for the future is is to learn as much as I can, again, about the old techniques. I know a lot, and I figured out some things that were wrong in books, and things that weren't written in books, and, and other things that were, that I feel, are right, by actually doing them and trying them and testing the swords and breaking the swords and analyzing things. But there's so much more to discover. And now that I like to work multicultural, uh, I need to live about 500 years just to get half of what I want done, and that's just no kidding. Uh, that's not going to happen. So I'll end up with probably more unfinished dreams and desires and things I've actually finished, but uh, just don't stop working at it and pass on what I know and let somebody else pick up from there.